Okay, with number three, we're starting at the end, and what's at the end is a plus one, which goes right onto the y-axis. Then we're gonna use that point to make at least one other point. I like to do two by using our slope. And I see that X there with nothing in front of it. What does that indicate our slope is? One. It is one over one. That means I'm gonna rise up, and am I gonna to go to the right or the left? This is where I have to think about, is this positive or a negative line? It's positive, so I'm gonna to go to the right. I can keep going from that point up. I can go up and over again, up and over again. It's just this nice, neat, straight line, isn't it? Up and over. I could also go down from there and move to the left. Do you see the same line being created? I went back to my first point, and instead of rising up, I rose down or dropped down, that elevator idea, right? And instead of going to the right, because it's a positive line, I went to the left. And I could do another point like that here and here. So you may not have all the points that I have, but I'll bet your line looks like mine. Because my line just goes right through the one on the y-axis. And looks like that. I'm going to pull three points off my graph. They may not be the same three points that you did, and that's okay. I always like to put the y-intercept there if it's on a nice, neat number. And in this case, it was on 1, so 0, 1. I'm also going to do the one that's at the x is at 3 and the y is at 4. And I like to put a negative one in there. If I have it, I've got negative two, negative one. Again, your table may not look exactly like mine, but as long as your graph does, your line on the graph, then we're good. It just means you pull different pairs and you maybe put different points on your graph. Okay, let's look at number four. Tell me where to start. Negative four, thank you. Because of this. I'm gonna make the XY table while we go this time. This point that we just put on is zero comma negative four, so it's gonna go on our table as zero negative four. My slope is giving me my directions on the graph like a map would do, and I'm getting rise is four and run is what? Three. So I'm gonna rise up four, and I'm gonna run over three. And how convenient, that's right there on that x-axis, isn't it? What's my coordinate for this? Three comma zero. I think I can get one more on here if I rise up four again and I run over three and it is right there on the edge of the graph. What are my coordinates for that one? I've got six on the x-axis and four on the y-axis. So if I was writing that with parentheses, it would be six comma four. Who's looked down at number six? Any thoughts on it yet? Yeah, let's not forget when we were learning about the kinds of slope, there were how many kinds? Four. Four. There's positive, which we've seen on two of these already. Well, three, I didn't draw my line, did I, on my last one? Oops. <clears throat> we have positive, negative, zero, and and I've heard two people make predictions that this is going to be zero. 
Where are you making that prediction from? What's, what's your guess? Let's go over here. I see a hand. Okay. Got to be a zero somewhere here to make this equation look this way is the prediction, basically. Okay, other thought? I really like both your predictions. I like the way your brains are thinking about this in similar but slightly different ways. Let me show you how we can prove that you're correct. We're going to start with our table. Our equation says that y equals 4, right? That means I could put four different, three or four different points on this graph but every single one of them, the y is going to have to equal 4 because the equation told us so, right? Let's start with the y-intercept then. If I put this here, what is the coordinate for the x on that? Right? How about if I try doing it at negative 5. Give me another number that we can put in for an x. 6. What kind of line are you starting to see come across? Let's do one more. Let's do 3. Now let's go ahead and draw our line. Sorry about that. Let's, con let's connect the ideas here because a couple of you gave us predictions and your reasons why, and I think you're starting to see that they were correct, right? <clears throat> this is what the equation could look like. If our slope is zero, and this is when we get back to what Hector said, somewhere there's a zero here because part of this equation is gone, right? That's probably what you were thinking, true? And Prehensha, you said the if the m is zero and it's multiplied by x, what's going to happen to it? It's going to go away. What is zero times x? Do we need to write it then? That's why it's like this. 